There are so many things that junglers think they know that they don't. The myths and misconceptions of League of Legends jungling is something that honestly compromises the way you play. It holds you back, it keeps you down from truly reaching your peak. In this video, I'm going to go over 10 of these from champions to play styles. And let's start off with a very serious one, but also one that's kind of manageable for most of you. The junglers must always help losing lanes. This is something that we've heard quite a lot of. Either you do help losing lanes or you don't help losing lanes. So which one is it? The thing is, get spam ping from your top laner, from your bottom laner, from your mid laner. You read on the forums that say, hey, there is shutdown gold for you. Why don't you just go ahead and kill them? That doesn't really make a lot of sense because most of those champions, when they have a big lead, can 2v1 you. Now, the idea is, look, you can shut down the most valid target in the enemy team and thus, you know, make the enemy feel useless because, oh no, our most fed member is dead. But the problem is some lanes are just ungankable and that's okay. The best thing you should be doing is attempting to try and shut down a fed laner elsewhere that's actually manageable or... In the case you have a winning lane, snowballing that beyond comprehension. If you have a ridiculously fed top laner against you and your top laner spam pinging you, let him suffer, mute him. He's gonna get dove, you're gonna lose the herald, whatever, man. But if you can sequence down, control your cams, maybe just set up a tent in the bottom lane, get your mid laner fed, control the dragons, push the enemy jungler out of his bottom side quadrant so he's actually trapped in the top side quadrant and has no choice but to dive the top laner. The problem is you can't counter jungle you because all your cams are down, because you control them, because you're smart, because you're good because you understand the fundamentals of jungling and you do not subscribe to the myth that you should be ganking losing lanes or you should totally avoid them because I'm going to counter myself by saying don't totally avoid it. Do what I said, yes, play somewhere else, get them snowballing, get them fed, get yourself strong and you will notice that that fed laner is something you can actually deal with even without your laner's help or you have created prior from the mid and the bottom lane so you mid lane or the support can go ahead and goon squad the fed guy and you're strong enough to do so. So it's not about, hey, let's never gank it or hey, you should gank it. It's about when can I and actually should I? Because sometimes you just might get to sneak a herald and use it somewhere else. Sometimes it's just a case of letting him die until you hit the nexus and the top laners go, oh, wait a second, the game ended. Never black and white, it's always grayscale and just make sure it isn't gray screen. And hey, to track your LP progress as you head towards the end of season 13 and the beginning of season 14, Mobilitics is the place to go. And when you combine that with using the best items and builds, using Mobilitics new itemization feature with the best data, it's faster, it's more accurate. And while most sites just assess the items individually, Mobilitics now assesses them as part of a build. So it's way more accurate and reflective of how good they are. You can't just show a third item and say, look at the win rate when you have no idea what the first two items were. All of this updated and pushed live to the companion app where you can put it directly into your client along with all of the pre-game tips, post-game tips, as well as in-game tips. So if you want to dominate on the best junglers in the best way with all of the best information and keep up to date with all of the new itemization changes as the meta develops, click the link in the description below to download Mobilitics today. And we also need to tackle some champion things. We'll alternate here between a jungle theory and a champion specific myth or misconception. And one of them is Lee Sin is like Nidalee, hard and shouldn't be played. I agree with you that Nidalee, Lee Sin and Rengar are the hardest to master, but not all of them are the same level of skill floor. Lee Sin can actually pretty easily be used even at a gold platinum level. Even high elo junglers, if you look at some challenger junglers that we can show you on screen, their plays aren't exactly mesmerizing, right? They're good, but they're not the best you've ever seen. And that's because they can make it work because the champion allows it to. He's a strong baseline champion. He has good itemization. He has good adaptive meta pathing, good adaptive meta strategies. He can contour to whatever is required from the jungle. Sure, the best ones like T1 Ono using Lee Sin and just smurfing on everyone, that's great. But you don't need to do that to make the champion effective. So get it out of your head that, look, I can never learn Lee Sin. Learn him from gold upwards. It's going to take a long time to master, maybe infinitely, and you'll never reach that point. But you can still be effective with this kit, with this combo. Sometimes all you need is one good disengage kick. Sometimes all you need is one flash insect ward hop kick. And then you can go ahead and do stuff. You don't need to burger flip the difficult mechanics to thrive. Master the baseline mechanics. And understand that sometimes just landing a Q into killing someone is just that easy. Nidalee is not often like this, which is why most people enjoy playing versus non-high elo Nidalees because their jungle knowledge and mechanical prowess aren't really that fused. But listen, go ahead guys, play him, he's strong enough. The third one we have for you here is, hey, playing aggressive invades and ignoring farm is bad. You should only full clear. How many coaches tell you, just stop ganking, just stop invading, farm sequence, get gold the passive way. Go ahead, you don't need to worry about your laners. And then your laners are all inting and the enemy jungler's fed and you're thinking, but I'm not strong enough, coach. I'm not strong enough. That's because the advice was shit. A jungler with literally no impact on the game whatsoever, you know, is not actually in the game and therefore doesn't get to complain about inting laners. You see, jungling is about a balance. It's about understanding that your playstyle, even if it's farming, is still having some impact on the lanes, either ganking before and after your sequencing. 
It's also like, look, the enemy jungler is ganking and getting away with things because that's what they do. Maybe I should just be counter jungling, taking objectives when they're on the other side. You're still impacting the map. You're still impacting the game. You should never ignore ganks. But likewise, being a hyper aggressive invader and ganking and ignoring that farm, that's also not balanced. It's fine to fall back to camps every now and then. It's fine to, you know, maybe do the red side quadrant, then look to gank lanes. Do the blue side quadrant, then look to gank some more. Sure, you're going to invade and gank more than the other jungle I just described, but it's about the balance of, you know, playing towards what you're strong at and bringing up those weaknesses enough that you're not doing too much of one and not enough of the other. It's obviously really bad when you fall behind and you can't catch up. So, you know, AFK farming is not going to get you back in the game and maybe some more high risk invades and gangs will do so. And likewise, we can give examples of hyper aggressive junglers who maybe actually make it work. They're really damn good at it because they sacrifice farm early, but they always fall back to it later on. Yes, I just covered a Shaco gameplay on my other channel showing this. Being able to have these hyper cheese invades and gangs works if you understand what tempo is because you're able to deny the enemy jungler their goals and set yourself up to do your sequencing a little bit later on. It's delayed rather than ignored. So if you're playing an aggressive jungler and permanent invading and you think, oh, this is bad, you should always fall back to your cams. You know, yes, it's about a balanced approach, but it doesn't mean you can't put a lot of that up front and then farm afterwards. On that note, we can jump to the next two myths and misconceptions about Karthus and Nunu, or Karthus if you prefer, which I do. And that is, listen, you should take Karthus and full clear into full clear and he does nothing and then he press R's and win the game. What a cringe champion, right? No skill. Only full clears, does nothing and wins. That's just a lie. And also, only bad Karthus's play like that. His damage at level 6 really, really sucks in the ultimate because he has no items to enhance it and thus makes his ult do a measly 120 damage or less compared to how much it can do after he gets Leandris. Think about that for a second. His power spike is either at level 11 or at Leandris onwards if he's ahead. So with this in mind, he doesn't only have to clear camps efficiently and in sequence, he has to fight. He has to invade using his fast clear to do so. He has to gank. The full clear leveraging that previous point is just the baseline of a balanced approach. The balance just starts with the farming first, and then he goes into his invades. Then he goes into his ganked, and then he can farm some more and do it again. There's a reason why exhaust is useful in the jungle. It's an amazing combat spell that makes Akarthas an absolute menace to fight. Go on as Rengar. Try and invade a Karthus with Exhaust when he's got a level over you from the full clear, and obviously does more damage with ISO Q damage, yes? Even if Karthus does die, he has his passive to finish off the kill and just chef's kiss you while also getting the Dark Seal stacks back that, you know, supposedly he lost when you killed him. And also that's why we go for Strike and not Dark Harvest. Keep getting money, keep doing extra damage, and you'll get a free needlessly large rod on a champion that scales into the late game, which is going to be way greater than anything you're going to get from Dark Harvest. So please, first strike. What about Nunu though? He doesn't have to 3 camp gank into every game, you know? The myth is, look, level 2 rolling snowballs, level 3 rolling snowballs, perma gank, do nothing, win condition, win because Nunu. That's not true at all. It's actually better if you go ahead and full clear with 2 points into your Q. You can still contest the scuttle because your Q does 600 damage. That's the same as smite, correct? So you can be faster, get level 4, be even stronger, and basically get yourself a guaranteed crab because most people are not going to time it with your animation, which you should start before 600 gets hit on the crab. By full clearing on a ganking jungler like a Nunu, you can then skip camps later on and not delay your levels as much because now you can be really, really active. It's the inverse of the Shaco example I just gave. You upfront the reset of all those camps when they respawn to level 4, 5, and 6. And imagine if you go spam ganking, coin flip, don't get anything because the lanes aren't ready and now your Krugs are level 1 at 6 minutes. It feels awful clearing them now, doesn't it? So you don't need to Psychopath gank every lane, you can legit do a full clear than gank, you can 3 camp then gank if you want, you have a lot of options, it's much like the balanced approach myth. Just always look to baseline your champion on what's necessary to make them strong. And again, Nuna's not weak early, you can still invade and do this stuff, same thing for Karthus, it's all about how does my champion do those things and which one does it prioritize. Maybe I prioritize ganking and farming, but together Fused is the absolute ultimate jungler. And on that note, you think, oh, it's a myth, right? The jungler's responsibility is to go ahead and secure objectives like dragons, barons, and rift heralds. And yes, I'm talking to laners here as well. This whole video is about laners as well, so you understand what we're talking about. Not entirely. You can direct your team to go ahead and take those objectives from ganking, invades, and so on. And as a result, you take them. But it's really not my sole responsibility. You know, if your laners are back to base and I kill the jungler and the top laner is resetting, just help me a little bit so you can get this free herald gold or you can get this free dragon gold. Don't go to base when you can easily take this. Now junglers, I understand you want to do a dragon sometimes, but your laners are low, they have a lot of gold, they need to reset. Don't force it. It's also not your responsibility to go and die for it either. If your laners seriously cannot help you on these objectives, swap over and take the other one. 
The other jungler will of course try and snack that one up that you should have been doing in your mind, but in reality it's okay to give up the dragon to take the herald. And it's less okay to give up the herald to take up the dragon, but once we have grubs, none of this matters. Use your laners, and laners use your junglers to take these objectives together. Now, obviously junglers, it's our job to solo them if we can and we don't need help. It's our job to be there with smite and have smite up, not miss a thousand smites in one game. As someone in a diamond level game submitted a replay of an Udia doing exactly that against him as Kha'Zix. But as always, the objectives of the map from dragons to turrets are the team's thing, not only the jungler's thing. And I cannot go ahead and do dragons if you're a 0-12 bottom lane and you're not actually thinking about playing the game. I'm going to have to go for the Herald and do other things, but we're not getting Dragon Soul to so play around that knowledge. The next one is that junglers should always adapt their pathing to suit every laner's needs. No, we're not about the laners and we cannot suit our pathing to everyone. If we start topside, we're not going to be able to readily rotate top lane when we're sequencing down. Likewise, if I start on the red buff and get a leash, I can't path upside and then TP back down to the bottom lane. You have to understand how to trade and lane relevant to your jungler's tempo and the enemy jungler's tempo and set your jungler up for success. For a jungler, from this perspective, firstly, you're considering what you want to do versus what the enemy jungler wants to do, right? Our whole goal is to jungle deny them everything while maximizing what we want. So you have to look at lanes and understand which way to path based on the matchups and the win conditions of those lanes. If you can invade the enemy jungler and take them out of the game, do it. But if you have a great ganking lane and you're a ganking jungler, path in that direction and try and get them snowballing. Don't full clear farm and go ahead and gank the Malphite lane. Malphite will always be useful, yes, with his ultimate. He just has to navigate laning phase gracefully. If you can impact his lane, go for it. But ideally, I'm looking to gank mid or bottom lane with better CC setup early. And sure, laners should help you and protect you where it makes sense, but the laners shouldn't always perma help you no matter what. You've got to get it out of your head that the laners should also, and this is I guess the next one, always play around the jungler. This is something that we get taught by streamers and everyone gets angry. Why didn't you help me rotate on the invade? Well, the Ziggs, for example, just killed the talent solo, has no HP. You're invading a Zac as Balveth. The enemy talent comes out of base and kills both of you. And the top laner rotates who is being destroyed by the Rengar. So whose fault is this? It's the Balveth. She went for this invade on a Zac, dumb, when the enemy mid laner is Talon, who was solo killed by the Ziggs, who can just shove it out, recall the huge advantage. Now he's felt compelled to help you when he should have just let you die. If you've got kill threat pressure on the bottom side on a Draven, please stay there bottom lane. If I'm getting invaded and taking a terrible fight and I can leave or I shouldn't be in that situation anyway, don't compromise your lane entirely just for me. So from a jungler's perspective, yes, laners should help and rotate and most of the time you can do, but not always. It is a myth and a misconception that junglers should always adapt their pathing to laners. And it's a myth and a misconception that the laners should always rotate to play around jungle. Yes, it's a good idea to do so, but there is room in there for nuance of, hey, it's not the best idea for me to do that right now. I'm about to kill a Draven, and if I leave, that guy's going to get a fat wave to himself, solo experience, life steal up, and we're going to lose that and then struggle to actively be able to win the game. Ninth over here, we have the Fiddlesticks Champion Game Spotlight, where everybody thinks he's a full clearer and an assassin later on and a terrible skirmisher. While you're not going to sit in the open field and perhaps go for a fight always, what people forget is that the W healing on Fiddlesticks is based upon the damage done, yes? And he can heal a lot, especially when he gets the last tick, because it deals missing HP damage to targets. All targets! So yes, if you don't have CC or you've wasted it and he gets that missing HP damage on the last tick, meaning more healing in the end, now you're looking at a fight that's quite difficult to actually navigate. But the healing is also, from W, 150% more effective on monsters. So if you W near a camp and someone's invading you on your Krugs while you're doing the red or your Grump while you're doing the blue and they ignore that, guess what? You're going to way out sustain heal them and then you're going to kill them because you do a lot more damage when they waste their CC spells. Really notable for things like mid lane graves invades or Kha'Zix invades. So while you might not want to sit in the middle of the lane and skirmish, sitting in the middle of the jungle or on monsters, hell yeah we do. And this is something that is not really known by a lot of people who play and face fiddlesticks. So please guys, look to be a bit more active in those situations. Additionally, everyone knows that everything's coded as minions, right? Pets are coded as minions and thus FAGs would as well. But FAGs don't, it's a myth. FAGs are coded like champions. So that's why they take away the isolation damage from a Kha'Zix. And additionally, Galio can actually alter an effigy and do a cheesy engage. You can block a lot of things with effigies, you just have to be creative with it and try. But at the same time, remember always, if something's related to a champion, then that's very important. You know, like blocking a Nuna Snowball, because it's coded as a champion and not a minion. And finally, champion misconceptions about win rate data and so on. Hey, so and so is OP, so and so is weak. Unless you're in the top 1% of the ladder, ultimately the champions you're playing won't necessarily matter in terms of your climbing capabilities, 
but you have to ask yourself the following questions. Do I want to climb quickly or do I want to climb a little bit slower and enjoy my time a bit more? If you want the first option, then you can pick any meta champion and climb like the breeze through any rank. But just because you want a meta champion lost to this off meta thing doesn't mean it's OP, right? When it is 1% pick rate and no one plays it, that's for a reason. And if you pick the second option, you will more than likely not climb in an instant like you would on a meta champion, but you will have more fun playing the champion and perhaps you can develop and get better jungle mechanics through that because you're having to compensate for a lot of weaknesses in the champion. So most of the time in solo queue, people will do a lot of mistakes. No matter what champion you're playing, you can exploit them. And you have to understand that just because one loses or wins on a champion doesn't make them strong or weak. Generally, balanced misconceptions mean people fear things that do not need to be feared. And in most cases, it's just your pilot or skill issue on the champion you're playing. So stop worrying so much about if something is strong or weak and learn just to play the champion you're playing and navigate those matchups by learning the fundamentals of them and the jungle. Squash this misconception and this myth that you need to play only strong champions to climb, but at the same time understand that there are stronger champions. It's just not something that's going to matter if you have a good mastery of jungling. And for that, we have the video on your screen now.